Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning into the broadcast today. And Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. And Kathy, thank you for coming to the broadcast today. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. I just love Christmas. Merry Christmas to everyone. You know, we love celebrating because why? This is the most, most wonderful, wonderful time, time of, of the year. year. <laughs> we love that. And we love that song. And we have been preaching a series entitled The Most Wonderful Time of the Year. And today it's all about what Jesus said, all the different characters that God used to get Jesus on the ground. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, it's our newest book, Kathy. Oh, I love you it. You know, and I, I've, ta I've preached a lot on the Christmas story, but mm -hmm. I tell you what, God gave us revelation on this, and I want to tell you something. And Jesus was in that manger. You know you know why people don't understand prosperity? Why, Jeff? Because they're looking at the hay in the manger oh. instead of looking at the king of kings laying in it, see? Mm -hmm. And when they understand that, it's just the most greatest time of the year. So let's go into this new, the last part of this series, the most wonderful time of the year. We're talking about Jesus Christ, and brother, we just don't have enough time to say everything about him. Yeah. Watch this and be blessed. So let's get into this part five here, dealing with Jesus. And I want to start reading Luke chapter two. We'll start reading with verse six. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son. Let me stop for a minute. Her firstborn son. Is it possible there was a secondborn and a thirdborn? Now, some people say, the mother of God, ever a virgin. I'm not going to knock and I'm not going to say yay, I'm not going to say that. But I do know he had brothers and sisters. And I know what, the, I know what theologians say, you know, that they, uh, Joseph had sons and blah, 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 this and that and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, there's nothing wrong with Mary having a baby. Thank you for that Holy Ghost grunt, other than Jesus. Not, there's nothing wrong with that, my Lord, by, by no means. And, uh, and because she was a very lovable person and a wonderful person. So they said the firstborn. Now, I know I've read all the books and all the different things, but they say about that. And, uh, and you know, if God doesn't say much about something, we shouldn't say a lot. Because we get in the, usually get in the error when we begin to say something that we shouldn't say. So let me read that again. Verse 7, and she brought forth her firstborn, wrapped him in swaddling clothes. So we go from the, right there, just that statement, from the manger to the cross. He's born to die. And laid him in a manger, a water trough, because he's the living water. A manger is a place where you put water in for cattle and sheep and things of that nature to drink from. Because there was no room for them in the inn. Do you know there's still no room in the inn of people's hearts? There's a lot of people's hearts that are just full of other things and God can't get in there if he wanted to. They read him to stay on the outside. Notice that. I never forget years ago, I was in New York. I walked in, got to my, and, and you know, they started charging me you know, at, uh, uh, I checked in at 3 o'clock. They started charging me at 12, and I got there at 5, and they said my rum wasn't ready. And I said, no, you don't understand. I need to get in my rum. We'll, we'll take your clothes and your suitcase and put it in a, <laughs> a little room. I said, no, no, you've been charging me since 12 o'clock. How come not my rum's not ready? You know, I said, I bet you your descendants came from Bethlehem. Because <laughs> Jesus couldn't get in his room neither. Our ancestors, excuse me, his ancestors. He couldn't get in his room neither. She goes, maybe, maybe they were, I don't know. Isn't that amazing? Let me read that again. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in his swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Then the next verse talks about the shepherds. I want to go to verse 11. Something miraculous happens here in verse 11. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. So he was more than a baby. What got these people excited was, see, they didn't come just to see a baby. The Magi didn't come just to see a baby. They came to see a Savior, a Savior of the world. This is the first time the word Savior is used in the New Testament right there. A Savior, which is Christ the Lord. So Jesus has very, if you think about Jesus' names, he's first Jesus, then he's Christ, then he's Lord. Think about that for a minute. His name is Yeshua. Jehovah, Savior, Jesus, and then Christ, the anointed one that sacrificed the anointed one in his anointing, and then Lord of all. It's a progression to those levels. Now, I want to go down to verse 16. Well, let's go to verse 15. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord had made known to us. 
And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. So I want you to write this down. When Jesus was put into that manger, when he was born, the very idea of Jesus is the illumination and the inspiration of existence. Because he was born, we live forever. Eternity was in that manger. Let me say it again. The idea of Jesus is the illumination, everybody say illumination, and inspiration of existence. The reason why I exist, because of him. Think about that. Because you had nothing to look forward to at all until he was born. So he could make that supreme sacrifice. The king of kings, the rose of Sherry, the lily of the valley, the bright morning star. Think about that. My God, at the sacrifice of sacrifices. Whoo, what a sacrifice. What a king. My Lord, are you hearing what I'm saying here? What a priest, a high priest. So what I'm going to say again, the idea of Jesus is the illumination and inspiration of existence. What did he do? That savior, that baby brought something called hope. For the first time after Adam and Eve sinned, there was no hope until he was born. No one could keep the law. They tried it. It, it just showed their sinfulness in an even stronger way. And yet the law was a perfect and wonderful thing. But when Jesus came, Christmas started. Amen. Somebody shout over that. Amen. Think about it. It started right there. You had a right to live forever. He was on a mission. And that, to do what? To bring you to the Father. He came that you might know the Father. See, without the birth of Jesus, the world is nothing but a puzzle. An eternity, a blank. You're born, you live, you die. End of statement. But when he came, he brought such hope that you could live here on earth as it is in heaven. If you'll just believe what he says. All you got to do is believe what he says. See what I'm saying? In other words, you don't have to wait to get to heaven to live heavenly. You can live heavenly on the earth. And you should be living right now at your home like you would be living in your mansion in heaven. He provided that. That baby provided that. He became poor that through his poverty you might become rich. Now he wasn't a poor man, but when you leave heaven, I don't care where you go on the planet earth, you poor. I don't know too many priests that you're riding on gold, walking on gold, pearly gates, diamond, barrel, jasper, honor, anywhere you go. You poe, not poor, you poe, that two letters. <laughs> See, so when you understand that without the birth of Jesus, the world is up, it is a puzzle, an eternity, a blank. See, that's why when I talk to people that don't believe in Jesus, they're, they're a puzzle. They have missing pieces. Yes. They're a blank. They have no eternity. Yet they do, they're going to live in eternity the wrong way. They, they don't realize that God brings an eternity and eternity should be a wonderful thing, not a judgment thing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So without the birth of Jesus, the world is a puzzle, an eternity, a blank. See, without his birth, something would happen. Moral life becomes a barren expediency. I'm going to go over this in a minute. Without his birth, morality was born in that manger right there. Without his birth, moral life became a barren expediency. Social life, a hollow shell. Intellectual life, an idle play. Because everything just doesn't make sense. But when he came, just him as a baby, it brought morality like the world has never seen. To such a degree, angels are shouting in heaven. Shepherds are shouting. Magi are going crazy. The church ain't saying nothing. They don't have a shout. They have law. Do this or die. But if they went to that stable or roadside inn, if you want to call it as such, if a rabbi would have went with those people who just simply heard the scripture for the first time, believed it, like I said about the Magi, they would have seen what the shepherds have seen. Are oh, you hearing what I'm saying? So let me say it again here. I'm going to go over all this so if you're writing it down. The idea of Jesus is the illumination and inspiration of existence. Without the birth of Jesus, the world is a puzzle, an eternity, a blank. 
Without his birth, moral life becomes a barren expediency. It's just barren. In other words, it doesn't produce nothing. Social life, a hollow shell. That's why you're always looking for a party to go to. That's why people wait for the weekend to have, to have a good life. I, have, I live Monday like a weekend. Because you see, he fills my life with good things. So my life is not a hollow shell. An intellectual life, my intellect is not an idle plan. I know in whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep what I commit to him. What do I commit to him? Everything. Everything in my life, spiritually, physically, financially. What does he commit to me? Everything he has, spiritually, physically, financially. I come boldly to the throne of grace. He comes boldly to my house. We walk together, riding motorcycles together. Lord Jesus, we friends. You see what I'm saying? That keeps you busy. Let me say it again. Without his birth, moral life becomes a barren expediency. Social life, a hollow shell. Intellectual life, an idle plan. What that birth did, let me go back to this, is get, he gave us hope. Hope is the blueprint of faith. When you have hope, the horizon is wider. And the best is yet to come. You see what I'm saying? When you have hope, when, that, when Jesus came, that's why angels could not contain themselves. This is that night you're supposed to be quiet. People are sleeping. They just start singing, shouting glory in the highest. They singing that song, glory. <laughs> Guess where we got that from? Glory. I mean, they're hollering. People are just, what's going on? They couldn't contain themselves. They realized that God had become flesh. Ooh, what a blessing that was. Do you see that? Yet he had become real to some people that had been traveling to get there many months before that. He was setting the world up for hope. A blessed hope. See, what an idle thing. His birth has given us hope. The horizon is wider. That's why I believe the unbelievable and receive the impossible because it's doable. That's why I'm blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going in and blessed going out. Why is that? Because my horizon is wider. What made it wider was my hope and my faith got it to working. Faith and hope, put them together. They're twin brothers, you know what I'm saying? Faith and patience, twin brothers. So triplets, if you want to call them as such. See, so I hope every day and I faith every day because you see, my faith can't work without hope. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things, not saying, so you got to have hope before you have faith. Amen. See, when you have hope, that's in the natural realm. Oh, Lord, because you go by what you see. When you have faith, faith has nothing natural in it. That produces the unnatural, the supernatural, to such a degree. And it's all coming from this little baby who can't talk, just want to sleep. That's probably the only other time God rested right there. He rested on the seventh day. Not because he was tired, because he was finished. And he rested on his birthday because he just started. Think about that for a minute. So his birth has given us hope. See, that's what's happening out there. When all people out, it's Christmas Eve. See, they got a little hope. My God, for just a few minutes, kind people doing kind acts. People that don't even think about God at all during the year. You walk up to Merry Christmas, they go, Merry Christmas. They tried to have a holiday, but it didn't last long. They tried the Xmas and it didn't last long either. Barbara, when you say Merry Christmas, even people that are not, not of the Christianity, they'll go, Merry Christmas. Because like, notice the word in front of it, Mary. Mary anointing. Oh, Lord, what a blessing of God that is. See, now when you learn these things, you learn them from a baby because a baby teaches its parents what to do. Because when a baby born, bless God, the baby controls everything. You get up when the baby gets up. You go to bed when the baby goes to bed. You eat when the baby wants to eat. Yet he can't talk. But he can show and pull you out of bed. Isn't that amazing? Most powerful person in the house is that baby. And one little smile just makes your day. I like to smile at children, babies. I see them sometimes, they look at me like, the little eye, the eyes are the windows of the soul, you know. And I just smile and they go. They love me because my hair's white. They think I'm God. 
Anyway, I kind of like to think that anyway. That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> now watch it. I've learned a lot of things in the Bible, and it's such a blessing, but I want you to write this point down, and then I'm going to deal with it. So long as we keep learning, we won't become conceited about what we have learned. So long as we keep learning, we won't become conceited about what we have learned. I'm constantly learning. Constantly, all the time. I expect to be blessed in the city, in the field, going in, going out. Why? Because the baby made it happen. If I'd have been living in that time, I'd have got on that camel too and go see who this, this baby is. Because see, what I was looking at was not the baby, the Savior, or what the baby can do. And it's amazing, even a baby you don't know will bring a smile on your face and a warmness in your heart. Isn't that amazing? So as long as we keep learning, we won't become conceited about what we have learned. You know, and watch it. God put himself in flesh to let Mary teach him. See, you parents, it's your responsibility to teach your children. Not just the mama. As a family, the father. That's why the world's so messed up, because we don't have many fathers. They won't take their responsibility as a father. Think about that for a minute. When you understand what's going on here, it's your job. So it's your job to teach that child correctly. And you're going to have to teach that child some things they're not going to like. Jesus at 12 years old, let me, let me jump 12 years. He's talking to the priest, the Pharisee, the Sadducee. They needed the sad, you see. They were sad, you see. So he had to talk. To <laughs> and she got mad at him, but she's the one lost him for three days. Hell, Mary. Full of grace. She didn't have too much grace right there. She a little angry at him. He said, woman, I'm about my father's business. Uh-oh. Something changed that day. See, she never understood the incarnation because the angel didn't tell her that. He told it to Joseph. She had to ponder these things. She had no understanding of that. She just knew something happened, but Joseph had to be told the truth. Joseph was a phenomenal man. We ought to have a Joseph day. Not, a, not just a Saint Joseph day. I mean, a, 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 a super Joseph day. Just like we have a super Jesus day. They both start with the letter J. Well, would you raise somebody else a child? Would you believe your old girlfriend if she says, I'm pregnant and it was an immaculate conception? Or do you need a dream and a big angel to talk to you too? You follow my point? That baby in that manger is God's forgiveness. That baby in that manger is God's forgiveness and God's love toward man. Not long ago, I was walking and I stopped and the lady had a baby. She was just, crying. the baby was just crying. It looked like about maybe, I don't know, 10 months old, nine months old, something like that. And it, just, and it looked at me and went, and I really, I, 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 I don't know these people. I put my hand out and the lady was glad to give me the baby. <laughs> the baby immediately stopped crying and just smiled. Put a little head on my chest. So I just kind of pat, pat the child, the little boy. And he just looked at me. And the lady said, he does not do that. I said, he sees Jesus in me. She said, who? <laughs> See, there was no room in her heart for Jesus. So she didn't know what the baby knew. Uh-oh. The baby knew more than the parent. Maybe that's the only teaching that baby will ever get. Just that, that, that hope, me holding that child. Lord, put my spirit in that baby. Put what I know in that child. Yes, sir. Let, oh, God. Because evidently, mama don't know what's going on here. So that baby in that manger is God's forgiveness and God's love toward mankind. That's why the manger, he's called the living water. You can't live without water. You got to have water. His birth began something. What did it begin? It began the undoing of the curse. The curse of sin. It, his birth began the undoing of the curse. And out of this, we find personal gratitude and rejoicing. I'm not under the curse. 
I mean, I've been set free. Now, I'm going to say something going to shock you. There was a man who was a phenomenal theologian, but he missed it on this. And his name was St. Augustine. He's the one that taught original sin. He said that you're born in sin. But the way, the, the way it sounded was the baby was sin. So some people preach for centuries that if a baby died, it went to hell because you had sin. You've heard that. That's a lie. That's a total misinterpretation that he actually messed up when he was re reading the Latin part, which is now a dead language. We were born in sin, but the baby is not sin. Jesus was made sin, but he was not a sinner. Now you can understand that. He was made sin that you might become the righteousness of God, but he was, made, he, he, he was not a sinner. How do I know that Jesus wasn't a sinner? Because he never repented. He didn't have to repent because he didn't do that wrong. But he was made sin. Because he was made sin, he had to go to hell for your sin. Are you ready to experience the Christmas story like never before? In his book, The Most Wonderful Time of the Year, Jesse Duplantis delivers an insightful, fresh look at the manger and beyond. You'll be inspired to have a higher life of faith as he explores the mysterious ways God moves. Get ready to elevate your character with the characters of Christmas. The most wonderful time of the year. Uncommon lessons from the Christmas story. Order your copy at JDM.org today. You know, Kathy, I, people are enjoying this book, but so am I. Even though <laughs> I wrote the book, me and Jody got together, boy, yeah. and, you know, I gave her my ideas, and she helped me write this book, and it was a blessing, the most wonderful time of the year, where I, God told me, said, Jesse, I use certain characters to get Jesus on the ground, and I have never done anything like this before. Right. And Kathy, isn't this amazing? That's why we're so and excited it. about it, you know, and I love the way we prepared it so that it can be a gift, Amen. and I'm looking forward to putting this in different parts of my house Praise and giving it as gifts this sure. Christmas to people, especially our partners, because look how wonderful it is. It says the uncommon lessons from the Christmas store. It's a great gift idea. And you know, people don't realize this. Let me tell you something about this. You know, when I begin to think about, and I preached on the Christmas story yeah. every Christmas, <laughs> but I've never done this. Yes. I begin to think about it. You know, Jesus would not have been born in Bethlehem. No, no. Why? You don't put a nine-month pregnant woman on a donkey and go over 100 miles. That's a long time. That don't way. happen unless Caesar Augustus tells you to do it. Yeah. See, God had to use Caesar Augustus to get Joseph to bring Mary to Bethlehem because, man, you just don't do that. God used that man who was a heathen, the unconscious obedience of an unbeliever. Yes. And think about all the wonderful people that God used to get Jesus on the ground. Yes. Caesar Augustus, my God. John the Baptist, the Magi, yes. the mother of Christ, Mary, and of course Jesus. What it's all about. What could be better than Jesus' birth? We celebrate that every year. And you know, some people don't believe as Jesus is the Son of God. But all these people out there, they, if they're in the business of retail, they sell more at Christmas than any other time. Why don't they acknowledge Jesus all during the year like they do at Christmas time. That's a great idea, and that's, what, that's why this broadcast is so important Amen. because it's our calling to tell the whole world about how wonderful Jesus is. Yeah, not only is he the Son of God, but he's a Savior. If anybody needed saving, the human race needed saving. That's right. Jesus' birth has given all of us hope. That's and I right. mean, I mean it really hope our horizon is wider off from this little baby <laughs> called Jesus, who's not a baby no more. <laughs> Praise yeah, the that's Lord. so true. And you know, people don't realize Jesus was born to die. Not in a bad, people think that's bad. No, no, so that we could live. I love that. Think about it. He, he went from a manger to a cross. And a lot of people don't understand about the manger. You know, they say, you know, Jesus was poor. You know what your problem is? You're just looking at the manger and the hay. You ought to be looking at the king and king that's laying in there. That's true. Boy, that's what it's all about. See, God's love, God's forgiveness came from that baby in that manger. And that manger, what it is, is a water trough. Mm. That's what the animals would drink from. Yeah, and Jesus is the living water. The living water. Yeah, Everything was so important. Every detail God orchestrated oh. at Christmas as an example for us. I kind of say God's an artist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Every stroke has got something so behind perfect. it. So perfect. I want so to thank all my partners for being so courteous and kind to help us preach this gospel literally all over the world. And I want to say Merry Christmas to you personally. Let me tell you something. Everything you send in this ministry, 100% of it, Kathy, mm -hmm. goes in the world evangelism. You know that. We've been debt-free since 1982. Think about that. You send us $20, the whole $20 goes in the world evangelism. Mm -hmm. Now, I tell you what, it takes more than $20. I tell people all the time, if a dollar don't buy much at Walmart, it don't buy much at church neither. <laughs> you know, but I tell you what, you've been so courteous and kind. And you've helped us increase right. our vision to a lost and dying world. That's so right. thank you for giving today. Yeah. 
Thank you for supporting this ministry all this time. Never have had a financial deficit. Why? God's always showed up and so have you. Kathy, tell me about what's going on with Total JDM here. Well, you said $20 doesn't buy much, but really $20 gets your whole lot here at Jesse Duplantis Ministries because for $20 or more, you can have the access to our newest benefit, which is Total JDM, okay. which is over 200 of our products that are available for people to watch on their television, iDevice, and, and then it's, it's interactive. It's really an amazing tool to spread the gospel to your family. You can listen to it or you can watch it. And it's amazing. Praise the Lord. Isn't that a blessing? God? Now people say, you know, if I'd like to have all of your tapes or all of the sermons you ever preached. You need an encyclopedia. You understand <laughs> that? I've been preaching 43 years, been in full-time ministry 41 years. You preaching every Sunday. Yeah. I'm preaching. We're constantly preaching. Yeah, and this one benefits is exclusively to those who give recurring giving or what we also call automatic giving. Right. So it's a great way to help us to spread the gospel, Amen. but also to receive the gospel in your home every single day. Isn't that a blessing to God? So get involved in Total JDM and you'll be blessed by it. Partners, I can't thank you enough once again. Nothing too small and nothing too big, what you do. And you know, this is a time of giving. Yes. But you know, I can say this about our partners. A time of giving is every month of this ministry with our partners. They're you so have been generous. so faithful. And I hope me and Kathy say thank you enough. Because I'll tell you what, we are reaching people, changing lives one soul at a time. Have you heard me say it many times? I got many big projects going on. And people say, when are you going to retire, Brother Jess? I don't have time. Why? Because God said, Jesse, go do this. And you know what? And I can't do it by myself. Jesus couldn't do it by himself. He had his disciples with him, and I need my partners with me That's right. to preach this gospel, support this ministry. We're doing ministry. it together. That's what it's all about. <laughs> now, stay right there. I'll be back in just a moment. We'll show you another few things that are going on here at Jesse DePlantis Ministries, and Merry Christmas. Stay right there. We'll yes. be back, me and Kathy, in just a moment. So watch this. Be blessed. Fear forces people to do things. Perfect love casts it out there. Obedience is the first condition of all progress. If you want to progress in life spiritually, physically, and financially, you have to obey. Love makes every garment of the Spirit perfect. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. The Power of Love, available for your December partnership of $50 or more. Visit JDM.org for more information. If you'd like to meet my friend Jesus, he would love to meet you. It is truly a blessing from God year after year to go all over the world sharing messages of who He really is. Really is. Really is. He's looking for ways to get blessing to you. Now, those messages are available at your fingertips. 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 You know, Kathy, we got a special show Very next week to launch the new year. Yes. It's going to be good. 2020. It's not only a new year, it's a new decade. A new decade, and God has so much in store for all of us, I don't want you to miss it. Mm -hmm. Once again, me and Kathy want to say Merry Christmas to everybody watching today. Call somebody and wish them Merry Christmas. Because it's not about gifts, it's about celebrating Jesus yes. Christ, okay? Merry Christmas, everybody. Bye-bye. We love you. Bye-bye. Yes.